why do you want to notify the government? Because if someone was receiving um, something like social security payments or annuity payments, and those things continue to come in, in the into the account, and say, you know, after you go through the court system, whatever, and you get access to the account, and you know, they're going to find out, they're going to catch up and realize this person died at this time, and those funds will have to be paid back. So um, that, uh, so social security, annuity payments, um, retirement payments, um, stimulus payments, <laughs> people had to pay back, you know, stimulus money, if you continue to collect that, because they may not find out right away, but they will find out and it will have to be paid back if someone, you know, cashed it or took that money or used that money. <clears throat> um, so those are the things that you want to do. Then finally, insurance. If you can get a hold of the insurance policies um, that the person had, um, all you need is really a death certificate and ID if you are the beneficiary and you'll be able to you know, fill out whatever paperwork the insurance company sends you, hand in that death certificate, and they literally will just cut you a check. That's how easy it is. So hopefully it's, the, it's a legit insurance company, the insurance company is still in place, and they will, you know, cut a check. And that's usually important if you need to pay for burial and things like that. Um, sometimes families are relying on that. So you want to make sure that you do that. And some other things like if someone owns a home, you don't want the homeowner's insurance to lapse on the property. So you want to make sure that you update that information. You want to let the insurance company know that they pass away and that, you know, you're in the process of, you know, taking over the estate or getting a hold of the estate so that they don't, you know, stop that insurance. Um, and typically if there's a mortgage, they'll continue to, the mortgage company will continue to pay it because they want that insurance to be on the property because they have their lien. But if not, if there isn't a mortgage, you definitely want to make sure that insurance is continued. All right. So what are um, sort of the next steps? So then you're going to go through the mail, right? Obviously, you're going to look for um, bank accounts because bank statements will tell you a lot of uh, what's going on in that person's life. So you'll know, you know, what they, what bills they're paying. You'll know what money is coming into the account. And so you could start to sort of uh, create a map or a listing of like, where are their assets? Where can we find these assets? So like finding a bank statement is golden. Um, if they, I know a lot of times everybody does things like electronically, like nobody wants to make statements coming to their house anymore. So um, email is gonna be golden. It, it'll be really hard to get that password if you, know, if you don't know anybody who actually knows it. So this is another, another piece of information that's important to sort of share or have some, a list somewhere where someone can get access to this information um, because then it'll make it so much easier for people. Um, but anyways, if you are going through the mail, you find bank statements, you find, um, you, you may be able to find insurance because insurance companies don't send mail every single month, but you might be able to find that. If you can find employer information, that would be great because the, the company will likely know at least what retirement they have, what you know insurance they might have, that will be helpful for the family to sort of um, use or give you a start uh, for that. So this is kind of like what the real deal is, how it actually goes down when, <laughs> when there's no information. Um, and then if you if there's a phone, you can actually go through the phone. So I had real, um, found out recently that Apple has this new um, legacy contact within the phone. So if you if you're Apple user, sorry Android, <laughs> but I mean I'm sure they'll catch up with something soon. Um, you if you go to the um, your Apple ID and go to password and security, and you scroll all the way to the bottom, there's a legacy contact. So you can actually put um, your loved ones or whoever you want. Like I put my husband and my daughter uh, as my legacy contact, and it it allows you to send them a QR code. So with that QR code and a death certificate, so they can't just get into your phone. Um, so with that QR code and death certificate, they will be able to get access to your information. So they'll get your phone, they'll get your, um, your photos, you know, all that stuff. There's like a few things they don't get, but important stuff they will get. So you can kind of leave information in there, in your phone to allow someone to get um, that information and vice versa. You could talk to your spouse and your loved ones, your parents and stuff like that. 
and set that up so that you'll be able to sort of get information when you need it. And it's good because you can't get it now, but you'll get it when you need it, right? Um, the other thing you wanna do is find deeds. If you can find any deeds to property so you kind of know what exists and typically a deed will always like have some language at the very top that identifies it as a deed. Um, and that way you'll know because every different states, it looks different. And that way you'll know what it is and you'll be able to you know, start to collect that information. So you're sort of collecting information so that you kind of know what the state is and you know what to do with that. Um, next, you want to cancel what's not needed, right? So you don't want um, bills to continue to pile up. So if there's something like, you know, obviously Netflix or um, cable, or if anybody still has cable or subscriptions, you know, <laughs> um, you just want to minimize that ongoing debt, whatever it is that's not needed, you could just go ahead um, and cancel that. And then you, you may want to talk to an estate attorney. So it depends on how large the asset is, how much time you have or the or anybody or the person has on their hands to actually deal with this. Um, an estate attorney basically will help you through this process and will file all the necessary paperwork in court to help um, get the estate handed over. Um, now, this is if you if the person passed away without a will or with only a will, because wills also do have to go through the court system, um, which if you, you probably, you may have heard me say that before. Um, so that's the next step. So once a court case is open, you know, what happens is paperwork has to be filed. All the information that I'm like telling you now needs to be gathered. Paperwork has to be filed. Typically we need to know how large the estate is because that's gonna depend on how the paperwork is gonna be filed. And then once all that good stuff happens, I won't bore you with all those steps, but you get what's called letters. So it's either going to be letters testamentary if there was a will or letters of administration if there was no will. Um, and then that person who is appointed will be able to now go set up the estate. So what is setting up the estate? So you would have to get an EIN number for the estate. You would have to open up a bank account so that whatever accounts that the person had or whatever cash, et cetera, that can be then transferred to that account and you can you know, handle whatever needs to be handled from there. Um, and then the next thing you wanna do is potentially close accounts, but you don't wanna close accounts too early because you wanna make sure you can get as much information from those bank accounts as possible. So like I said, any deposits and withdrawals, um, things like that will be helpful. Um, and then if like, if like certain payments are coming in that would pay for the mortgage and things like that, maybe, maybe you don't want to stop those. It depends on what it is. Like I said, if it's from the government, you probably have to stop it. But if not, then uh, maybe you want that to continue. Um, and then, you know, set up the estate, access the accounts to be able to get all the assets out. So now one thing I wanted to point out, I don't know if a lot of people still have safe deposit box these days or if not. Um, but if there is a safe, safe deposit box, you can only access it to get the will. Um, and then if you, once you have the will, then you have to wait for the whole estate to be, you know, you have to wait for these letters to be issued and then you will have access to whatever else is in that safe deposit box. 